Welcome to Sew Pretty Kitty. This is my vlog where I talk about all the things I love about sewing and today I'm going to do a slightly different video. So I'm going to do the five things that have been inspiring me to sew just recently because you may or may not know that the UK summer holidays has just ended and I'm just going to do a little happy dance. I do love my kids dearly but six weeks is an incredibly long time to spend with three kids at home and also equals not very much time for sewing and me time. So as much as I love them and we had a fabulous summer holiday, I'm actually really quite glad they're back into a routine and I get more time to sew. So let's crack on with today's video. So the first thing that has been inspiring me to sew, number one. Project Runway. Oh my goodness, I am obsessed with this show. I have been watching it, it's on Netflix at the moment, there's multiple seasons to catch up on and us in the UK we get The Sewing Bee which is a fab show, don't get me wrong, I'm really excited that it's coming back but Project Runway is kind of on another level. It's like an American version of a reality TV show so there's quite a lot of drama but um, it's um, each each challenge is kind of a design-led challenge so it's much more about fashion and design and runways and catwalks and models and you know being innovative and pushing the boundaries and all, all the things that kind of inspire me to want to get on and make my own clothes. So I have been watching uh, episodes of Project One Runway and feeling like I have this uh, desire to um, create new things, which it, it can't be a bad thing, right? So um, there's I've been thinking about design and the and the style and fashion and uh, the shape of clothes and how clothes have been put together. And when you can sew, you have the tools to be able to create things that you want to wear. So this is why. Um, being able to sew at home is such a fantastic hobby. You know, if I see a dress um, that I want to replicate, I've got the tools to be able to do that, which is amazing. So that has been really inspiring me to um, sketch um, dresses, to plan things, to try and execute slightly different things that are maybe a little bit out of my comfort zone and what I wouldn't normally go for. Um, so uh, leading on from that, I am wearing today this uh, blue stripy dress which I have made and talked about in a previous video. Um, if you go to my channel you'll see I did one about stripe matching because I was very pleased with myself this was my first stripe matching attempt. Um, this dress, let me just see if I can find the pattern here somewhere because I did pick it up. Hmm. Yeah, no, can't find the pattern anywhere here but it is M6886 I think. Yes, and I've, I, I've made this out of a stripy ponted aroma that I got from Stitchy Bee um, and it's a lovely, lovely dress. I'll just stand up. I'm wearing it with a red belt today and I have worn this dress over and over again over the summer. Um, uh, it's not quite so good on really hot days. Ponty is quite a warm knit and um, so now that the weather is changing and it's getting slightly cooler, it's perfect. And I love to wear it with these red accessories. So um, I was thinking, what what shall I do to sort of like make another one of these dresses? Because I obviously find this really comfortable and um, practical and I'm done with making clothes that um, I are just like one occasion pieces. I want clothes in my wardrobe that I can wear um, on a daily basis and uh, this dress I have worn dressed up uh, for nights out with red heels and I've also taken the belt off and worn it dressed down in, in fact it looks nice with um, a jumper over the top of it. So I was looking around and decided to uh, make a grey one so I really like the colour grey. I went to Fabricland um, the other day and found this really beautiful grey ponte. Uh, it's got kind of almost like a little bit of a sheen to it and uh, some, it's almost got lines on it so it's a little bit unusual. Uh, it's not too sheer, it's got a lovely stretch and I love this charcoal grey colour so I'm hoping that's coming out nicely on the video for you. So, after I bought this fabric, I was thinking, right, 
I like stripes, I like nautical, I like red. What goes with grey? Grey really goes nicely with yellow and tan and leopard print. So I will just have to take them off my feet because I'm wearing them. I picked up, I don't know whether or not you can see these very well, uh, these beauties. They're just a cheap pair of um, flats from uh, New Look, I think they were. Just, you know, I don't really spend a great deal of money on fashiony things for myself because I know that stuff goes in and out of fashion quite quickly. And leopard print's one of those ones that um, tends to stick around. So I thought, oh yeah, they look lovely with grey. So the grey and the leopard print together. And I also picked up in New Look this really inexpensive skinny belt, which is sort of a tan colour, which also goes really nicely with the grey. So uh, that is my next plan. So thank you Project Runway for giving me inspiration to, you know, design my own look. And let's move on to the next thing. So, number two. Pinterest. Have you guys found Pinterest? You must have done. Who hasn't got a Pinterest board, right? Pinterest is the most amazing place to collect together things that you like. So um, sometimes I just browse, I'm looking at different outfits, people put pictures on there, There's also sort of all different types of fashion trends that are going on. And I really like the fact that you can see an entire outfit. So you can think to yourself what colours go with which um, which shoes go with which dresses, what shapes look nice on different body types, what different colours go nicely together. Um, and, you know, fashion and trends doesn't come naturally to me particularly. I do need to do a little bit of homework to see what's going on. That's not to say that I am in my entire wardrobe is fashion-led, because it's not. I don't like some of the things that are popular, and I like some of the things that aren't popular, you know. So a lot of the time, my sewing reflects what I like but Pinterest really helps you to collect together all those ideas in one place so you can scroll through and think oh you know I might go for a different coloured scarf next time because that looks really nice with that pair of trousers or that jacket so um, if you haven't checked out Pinterest go for it it's like a mood board for all the things that you love and I really enjoy putting together ideas and just scrolling through and getting inspiration from that which leads me on to my next make. Um, I was scrolling around on uh, Pinterest and came across some hoodies that had embroidery on them. And um, if you search on Pinterest for embroidered items, there are quite a lot of different bits and pieces around. But I was making a Stella hoodie, which I talked about in my last video, out of this lovely mustard um, French terry that I got from myfabrics.co.uk and I was partially through the project and then looking on Pinterest to think how can I make this hoodie just a little bit different, just a little bit more special, something not quite the same as um, my previous hoodie that I made, uh, not quite as casual perhaps. Um, so this is what I've came up with. I have, so you can see from the back, I've got this lovely mustard, oh, I've been wearing it so there's probably a lot of stains on there. It's got a grey hood lining, which has got tiny little navy blue stars on it, and that came out of my stash cupboard, so it's perfect. I love the fact that I've got enough stuff that if I sit down, um, feel creative, I can come up with something, because nine times out of ten, there's something in my stash that will suit the, the job in hand. So um, I will show you now what makes this a little bit different. I'm still waiting for my um, hood cords to come. So I've ordered some shoelaces from Amazon, just some flat grey shoelaces, because I thought grey shoelace would look nice. And I, I think I showed, did I show you this in the last? I think I showed people on Instagram, but my husband bought me this really, really cute embroidery. So I don't know whether or not you've seen this before. Um, it's a hummingbird and I just love all those colours, um, really autumnal colours there. And when I laid it on top of this mustard French terry, I just thought, wow, that looks really lovely. So um, I will pop this on so you can see what it looks like. This is obviously the Stella hoodie from Tilly and the Buttons. So 
where I thought the embroidery idea would actually just make it slightly more, um, slightly less casual. So here we are. I popped the embroidery motif on the hip because also I was a bit worried. I didn't want to look like a, a child because um, obviously sometimes if you have embroideries up here, it can make the hoodie feel a bit sort of childish. Whereas I think on the hip that, like that, that looks slightly more grown up. And it goes nicely with this dress, as you can see. So it's a little bit less casual than a normal hoodie. I chose not to put the pocket on the front. I didn't like that at all. I don't know why I pinned it on and it just didn't look right. Whereas I love the pocket on my previous hoodie. This one, I don't know whether it was the weight of the fabric. This gray um, jersey is a little bit heavier than the French Terry. And when I popped the pocket on the front, it just sort of accentuated my tummy area and didn't look very flattering, I don't think. So yeah, got rid of that. Uh, I took an inch off the length as well of the actual body of the hoodie before I sewed the waistband on uh, because in my last one I felt that it was just a little bit long in the body. But yeah, this is my Stella hoodie. So thanks Pinterest for giving me the inspiration for my embroidery patch. I'm well pleased with this one. So, number three. I've got a subscription to Love Sew Magazine and Sew Magazine, and I've had them for several years now. I really enjoy them arriving in the post. It's something that I like to do with a cup of coffee in the kitchen, perhaps when the kids are watching a bit of TV, or um, when we go to the park, I quite often sit on the park bench and read my sewing magazine whilst they play. And to me, it's like a tiny little gift that comes, it's a sewing related gift that comes through my front door and um, there's obviously patterns in these sewing magazines. Now sometimes they're not necessarily patterns that I would have chosen. Sometimes I really don't like them and you know I pass them on to other people or pop them in my stash for another day maybe. Um, styles change don't they? But sometimes you get a real gem of a sewing pattern in the magazine. And as well as having uh, a lovely gift, you also get loads and loads of advice um, on sewing techniques. And you also get a little roundup of what's going on in the sewing community. Um, so yeah, a sewing subscription, I think it's well worth its money, especially if you wanna grow your stash of patterns because it's really good value. You get not only the magazine, but you usually get one, sometimes two patterns. Um, for about £5.99, £6. So, um, my latest inspiration has come from Sew Magazine. So, I was so surprised to find when I opened my packet, it's only the toaster sweater, and I have been wanting this pattern for ages. Now, you might have noticed this is, um, excuse the ramblings down here, I was scribbling on it for another reason. So how seven and in collaboration with Simplicity. So it's K eight five two nine. I'll pop that in the show notes. Um, yeah, and the, the toaster sweater was really popular last year. Loads of people made this pattern. Um, I particularly like view B. So this has got like a funnel neck and it's a little bit more cropped. And um, I'll show you the line drawings here. So this is view B here. Um, I think I'm going to start with that version because I really liked all the different versions I've seen on um, the internet of that pattern made up. So yeah, I was um, when I was getting my grey ponte Roma, I was also looking around to see if there was anything suitable to make a toaster sweater out of. And this was also in fabric land. They do sell online um, fabric, so just check them out. I'll put the link down here. Um, and I found this lovely monochrome jersey, it's so soft, it's a sweater knit of, um, I don't know what the composition is, but it's ever so soft and really lovely quality, um, really cheap, I think the Ponte Roma I bought was 4 99 a metre and this was 5 99 a metre, so I just really loved the grey, the black, the white, and it's kind of reminded me of other fabric that I've seen. You can see how lovely and drapey it is. So I'm excited to see how a toaster will turn out. 
I'm not sure whether it's got enough structure for the funnel neck, that's the only other thing. So I'm going to think about it carefully before I cut into it. But at 5.99 a metre, you can't really go wrong. I bet you probably don't need more than a metre, maybe a tiny bit more. So yeah, this monochrome, I am really looking forward to pairing up with my black skinny jeans, um, black skirts and black tights and black boots, and maybe adding sort of like a pop of colour at the top, round my neck, a scarf or a statement necklace or something, because this pattern on here, this print is just lovely. So yeah, if you can, get to Fabricland and grab some of this because I bet you it's not gonna last very long. So let's move on to the next number. Four. So number four is Instagram. Have you guys got an Instagram tag? Do you understand how Instagram works? Because I did not understand Instagram about five, six months ago, and now I'm always on there. It's almost like you get attracted to other people through their interests, through their photographs. So rather than having Facebook, which is your friends that you m might know in person, this is more about linking you to people who have the same sort of aesthetic, the same sort of style, the same things that are interested in. So for something like sewing as a hobby, Instagram is awesome. It puts you in touch with loads of people that also love the same hobby as you. Um, and it's really opened up a huge community of people that I wouldn't necessarily have interacted with before. You also can get loads of inspiration for other people's makes. So say for example, you want to make this dress and you search hashtag M6886, um, you will come up with all the dresses that people have tagged with that tag. So you can see what different people have done with that pattern. And it's awesome for sewing in that respect. Any pattern that you want to make up, you can first of all search and make sure that you um, that it looks good on people and whether or not they've found it interesting or a useful pattern or whether they've made more than one. So um, I really enjoy Instagram. It's also loads and loads of um, Instagram type challenges that you can get involved in if you're a home sewist. So you can um, make the same pattern or you can do, I did um, wrap dress pattern at one point, which was really good. Um, so uh, yeah, check out Instagram. It is really interesting. And I've also come across some people in my local community, which has been handy. Um, I've come across a lovely lady who runs uh, Lucy's Handmaids. I think that's what it's called. I will put the web address down here. I've actually just bought something from her website, a pair of prim um, pliers for applying poppers, because that's the next thing I want to have a go at. And uh, she has a lovely sewing, um, what's the word, studio where she teaches and runs retreats. So check her out. She is awesome. And also through Instagram, you can have like conversations with your friends about stuff and you can share ideas. And I, I just love it. My friend um, Tash is on Instagram and she made some fantastic hoodies for her kids from a brindle and twig pattern and I'd never come across them before. Um, again, I will pop the details below. And so she very kindly gifted me um, the pattern so that I could trace off the size five for my son. Um, I'll pop a picture of the pattern in here so you can see what I'm talking about. And in my last video, I talked about this wonderful dinosaur sweatshirting that I had bought from so uh, lovely jubbly fabrics and I'm pairing it you can see I've cut it out ready because that's my next plan over the weekend this is the front of the hoodie and then it's going to have black jersey sleeves um, a black jersey waistband the hood will be in the dinosaur fabric and the hood will be lined with the black jersey so I think that's going to be really cute um, for my son so Instagram definitely thumbs up Follow my hashtag, my um, tag on Instagram here. So the way it works is people have an app sign in front of their um, names. So that's how you link to people. And the hashtag is how you linked to the pictures of things. So 
Say for example, you want a full circle skirt. If you put hashtag full circle skirt, every picture that people have tagged with that hashtag would pop up and you'd be able to see them all. So how amazing is that? Let's move on to the next. So number five, number five is podcasts. Have you found podcasts yet? Sewing podcasts keep me running, literally. When I go running, I love to listen to Stitches Brew podcast and also love to sew, which is an American based one. Stitches Brew is run by Gabadashri and Megan um, of Pigeon Wishes, I think her name was. Um, I'm obviously going to pop every all the information down here so you can find them. And a podcast is literally like a, a little um, radio show that is specific to what you're interested in. So you don't have to listen to an entire radio show to hear the one bit you're interested in. This is like talking to you about all the things you love, about sewing, especially Stitches Brew. So they talk about the UK sewing community, they have guests on their um, uh, podcasts and as I'm running along I find that really inspiring. It keeps me wanting to hear the next uh, discussion about sewing patterns and um, entrepreneurs, people who set up their own businesses in sewing, people who have health problems that has you know inspired them to go on and sew and find it as a you know, sewing is a hobby and a therapy. There's so many different um, episodes on the Stitches Brew podcast that you will love to listen to, especially if you follow a lot of these people on YouTube or on Instagram. It's nice to find out a bit more about them as people and what makes them tick. Um, and also makes me feel inspired and motivated to want to do things for myself, to make, you know, to push myself further. A lot of these women are incredible businesswomen. They've got children at home and they're still managing to write books and draft patterns and um, sell fabric. Um, so I can definitely recommend that. Love to Sew is also equally amazing. Lots of their guests um, are transcending across the continents anyway. So even if there's people on there that you might not necessarily have heard of, there'll also be people like Lisa Comfort from... Um, um, sorry, I had a senior moment there. Sew so over it, obviously. Lisa Comfort's been a guest on their show, I'm pretty sure. Um, so yeah, check out those. They're pretty easy to find if you've got an iPhone of any kind or any sort of smartphone you can find usually a little app um, that is for podcasts and then you just search. Um, other podcasts that I really enjoy listening to are um, Happy Place which is a uh, podcast by Fern Cotton which talks to people about their mental health experiences and um, it's just fascinating. So I can't recommend podcasts enough as a source of inspiration. And also as a way of listening to stuff that is about sewing when you're doing other things or listening to it whilst you are sewing. So that's all my five inspirational things that have made me want to sew just recently. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. If you click the little bell, you'll get notifications when other videos are uploaded. And leave me comments because I love reading comments from you guys. It's just awesome to be part of such a lovely community of people. Thanks very much for watching. Bye.